Hey there, Snowflakes. Today, we're going to go way out there and we're going to talk about the 1971 Smith Rolls Factory Race Lid. <laughs> So here's a picture of the sled uh, as it was on Kijiji. Uh, you can see it, it was sitting on a farm and the guy wanted to get rid of it because he said they were cleaning up the farmyard and they were going to send a lot of stuff away uh, to get crushed. But he, this was his family sled he rode as a kid and he hated to see it go to the crusher. So as it worked out, he ended up uh, just giving it to me. In fact, he even dropped it off at my house, which is pretty crazy. He refused to take anything for it. You can see just how much grass and moss and dirt was on this thing. Um, but if you can look past that, you can see like it's not really banged up. There's no dents or anything. Uh, it's complete other than the seat. It's got the original skis on it. The one major thing that was wrong with it, the, the track was really pretty much toast. The engine actually, I put some gas in it, actually ran, but uh, I wasn't really interested in keeping the CCW 340. It's like a first gen 340 for the CCW twin, and uh, it was, you know, not a lot of horsepower. I think it was like maybe 18 or 19 or something like that. So the first thing I did was pick up a Skidoo uh, Citation LS. I got one, it was pretty much trashed, other than the track and suspension, which, you know, were semi trashed actually they need a little bit of work and the drivers uh, the factory track on the Comanche was only 96 inches long and they're, they're you know, pretty much non-existent to find a good one so here's a view of the uh, both drive shafts on the left is the one out of the skidoo and on the right is the one from the Comanche so what I opted to do was cut the spline from the Comanche drive shaft and then machine it down and weld it and graft it onto the skidoo drive shaft. This way I could use the two row chain and the, the sprocket off the Comanche and use the drivers from the skidoo. Uh, it didn't take a lot of work, it wasn't that hard. Here's the drive shaft test fit into the uh, chassis. Um, everything seemed to fit okay. These are the original hangers that were used for the the bogies. I opted to reuse them. I remachined the tabs off where the bogies would go on, and then uh, I calculated where the the holes would be for the the mounting points on the suspension, and I machined these little slots in to help guide them in when I would set it into the tunnel. This is the first test fit with everything uh, the suspension put underneath it. You can see there's no track in there. And now here's a picture with the, the track in. And I made uh, little blocks to go on the end of the springs there to keep them from wearing into the, into the tunnel. The bulkhead and the, the suspension components were pretty rusty, so I sandblasted them and I decided to have them powder coated. Um, seemed like a good idea. It looks really nice. The skid was a fair amount of work. I had to get a lot of new fasteners and manufacture some new uh, rods to go across from each slide. Uh, I redid the wheels and painted them, uh, clear coated them, and then I made uh, new wear tubes to go on the, the end of the, the floating arms. Uh, 
looks really good. Uh, new slides, guys. I got new slides. Like I said, everything was uh, was redone on the skid. Here you can see you know, what great shape the belly pan and the side panels were in. I mean, uh, like almost like new. Uh, I opted to paint the side panels black just to make them look a little different. The skis turned out really great. Um, they had no holes in them or anything. They were just, you know, kind of rusty. Uh, I made new spindle bushings. You know, you can buy these, but I had some, I had some bronze kicking around, so I just decided to make some. The old uh, snow flap was uh, ripped and, and broken, so I got a piece of used uh, belting from a a belting scrap supply and uh, it, you know I think it was about five bucks uh, a new light I got at Napa and here you can see the whole thing uh, put together on the back the tank was in really great shape on the inside it didn't require any treatment or anything it looked like actually it looked like brand new on the inside so I stripped it and cleaned it, cleaned the outside, and then I spray painted it red and put a clear coat on it and help protect it from the from fuel. And it looks like looks like brand. It looks better than new, to be honest with you. In this mock-up, you can see I've got uh, some spacer blocks that I put between the skis and the spindles to make up for the difference in height on the rear skid. And now you can see the. The secondary has been installed as well as the gas tank. I had to make a bumper stop for the steering on the gas tank because the only stops that were there were the sides side panels and they had small dents in them. So this stops them from uh, hitting the panels. I get a lot of questions about the engine. Now this is a Cayuna 428 or 429, whatever you want to call it, 440, and. To make it look period correct, I use a JLO badge off an older 440 twin. Um, I had to make a new engine plate to make it fit on the sled. Uh, I modified the one head to make it a little cooler on the one side and then the other. These engines are known for getting hot on one side. Other than that, it's a stock 428. I used an older recoil from a uh, a Massey twin that I had and I ordered a, a fan cover, a JLO fan cover I got off eBay. The exhaust is the stock Donaldson which works super with this engine by the way. Uh, I had to make a pipe for it and then uh, I wrapped it in some spare header wrap that I had kicking around here. And everything fits nice, it sounds superb, makes a boatload of power, it's way more powerful than this sled needs. For the seat, uh, I used the seat foam that I had on the, the Citation and I cut it down to the length that I wanted and then I filled in the gaps in the foam with some spare pieces of foam I got from my neighbor. Uh, I cut them with the uh, electric knife and glued them in, uh, made a piece of wood and then I had the whole thing recovered at a local shop. Uh, the seats attached using uh, Velcro strips, so I'm not using the original rivet on tabs. Uh, I just didn't really like that. It didn't seem, didn't seem like a great idea. The hood was in pretty reasonable shape, but it needed, it did need some work. It had some chips and stuff in it, but no major breaks. So I sanded a lot of the gel coat off and I had it painted and I was not thrilled with the original repaint I guess you could say uh, it wasn't the color I wanted there were still some chips in the paint so a friend of mine we worked out uh, some horse trade and he did an awesome job he got the color bang on I know he spent a lot of time working on this and it, it really shows it it's it's perfect to me it's exactly what I want so here's the machine finished and you might ask like why that crazy yellow and why what's with the what's with the Smith rolls well 
you know, I didn't like the factory color and I didn't like the engine and I, you know, there was a lot of it that I didn't like and I thought, well, it'd be more fun to kind of customize it. So I went with a Saskatchewan company that, you know, back in the day, they actually did manufacture some sleds, sort of. And, you know, they were a company called Smith Rolls. Anyhow, that's a whole different kind of episode. So there's a few other little custom things that I did on here. Uh, most notably, I guess, is the intake on the carburetor. I kind of wanted to do something that was a little bit ridiculous. So I went with, I made an adapter and made a you know, twin air horn going into a single carburetor, going into a twin kind of thing. Uh, I like stupid stuff like that. Uh, the the tachometer, you can see is spaced up about three quarters of an inch. Uh, that is just so it can clear the uh, belt cover underneath the hood. Looks a little bit cool. Uh, the, the controls are off of uh, John Deere. And uh, on the one side, I've mounted the because there were, you know, there were switches that were on those controls. So I made a little holder to hold the capacitors in there for the engine, and then ran them down into the into the engine. So I, it, you know, they work. So <laughs> and it looks stupid, and it, you know, people ask questions, which is, you know, what I like. There's a tool bag in front of the the seat and uh, I had that remade I had an old one a lot of Roloflexes came with those they they, they kind of just look like a, an old shaving kit to be honest with you but the guy <laughs> the upholstery guy was not thrilled with having to make that but whatever he charged me for it we both he got paid we're both happy the clutch is a it's a power block a newer power block uh, that uh, a buddy gave me the original sled had a little power block on it. It seemed like a good choice. <laughs> What's the verdict? <Ooh. laughs>